<laughs> so that wasn't quite as good as how Joaquin Phoenix did it in this movie, but that's all I got for you. So that is not Joaquin Phoenix's Joker, but that is the Joker right there. So as what you can see by how this video started and what I just showed you, yes, this is a movie review for the film Joker, for those who are wondering, for those who haven't caught on yet, which I'm assuming you did. So, um, in this movie, Joker, guys, this is a standalone DC comic film. Um, as far as I know, this is not supposed to be connected to the DC Extended Universe that has been made so far. So, this does not connect to Justice League. This does not connect to Batman vs. Superman. It does not connect to Shazam. It does not connect to Aquaman. It does not connect to Wonder Woman. It doesn't connect to any of those. Um, so, it's kind of its little own standalone villain origin movie. Um, and it worked. It really worked really well. I really liked it. Um, so let's talk about synopsis and what I liked and didn't like about the movie. So, um, in this movie, you guys, we focus on a character named Arthur Fleck who eventually becomes the Joker. Um, for those who are wondering, this is a non-spoiler review. No spoilers, just my overall opinion of the movie, you know, things like that. Um, but, so Arthur Fleck, he is a, um, he has a, where he works a day job as a clown, um, he helps out with, like, advertisements and entertainment. You can hire him for, like, a party. You can hire him for, like, a closing out sale of a store for a clown, uh, for going out of business and things like that. Um, so Arthur Fleck, he lives at home with his mother. He um, <clears throat> seems to have a very traumatizing past based off of all these sources we hear throughout the movie and things that come to um, the light and things like that, things that we find out about him throughout the movie. Um, so he has a very traumatizing past, like I said, they can't get into. <clears throat> and he eventually gets pushed in a way that kind of puts him off the deep end, really kind of challenges how he views society. He kind of views society as this place that's broken and will never get fixed. And um, that his career as a clown is kind of not enough for him. He um, basically wants to push this to the next level. He wants to kind of make his statement that he really feels like this broken thing that we live in in this world will never be fixed. And so he basically forms a, basically a movement pretty much within Gotham City that encourages other people to dress up as a clown in a way. Like I said, I can't get into details on that. Um, but it kind of forms this clown movement, so to speak. And um, Arthur Fleck kind of motivates others in Gotham City to kind of do what he's doing. Um, it is important to note that Batman is not in this Gotham City yet. This is a pre-Batman Gotham City, so it's late 70s, early 80s, roughly. Um, and Thomas Wayne, who is Bruce Wayne's father, is still a very dominant figure there. Bruce Wayne is still a child and not quite Batman yet. It's impo important to know that going into this movie. So if you're expecting Batman to show up, he's not around yet. This is a pre-Batman Gotham City. So um, going back to where I was at... Um, the Joker forms this basically this movement and uh, makes a statement within Gotham City. And over the course of time, he becomes the clown prince of crime himself, the Joker. So overall, guys, I really like this film a lot. Um, it was really refreshing to see a villain origin story that was done right, done correctly. Um, it was cool to see a Gotham City that I personally feel was done correctly again after what Christopher Nolan did with his Dark Knight trilogy. Um, I wasn't a big fan of Batman vs. Superman. I really didn't feel that Zack Snyder made a very good film with that, uh, though it set up films that I enjoyed later on, like Wonder Woman. Um, Justice League, I liked, if, if I could even say that. Um, you know, I, I enjoyed it for what it was. Uh, I'm not crying about not getting a sequel for it if we don't get one. I'm not crying over the recasting or a rebooted Batman at this rate, like what they're talking about with Robert Pattinson. Um, so I went in this movie kind of like, okay, you know, fresh new take on Gotham earlier in the past, uh, pre-Batman, no Batman yet, and things like that. So I was very open to kind of seeing what they could do with the Joker story, see where it could go. And um, definitely seeing where Joaquin Phoenix could go as an actor with the Joker character. And this film succeeded on several levels. So the good news is this is definitely a positive Joker review. I really enjoyed this film. Let's go over some positives and negatives as to why I really enjoyed the Joker. Uh, so for my positives, um, Joaquin Phoenix's performance in this film is wonderful. He is a great Joker. He is a great Arthur Fleck. 
He um, really has to bring a physicality and a um, voice emphasis to this Joker character throughout the entire runtime of two hours. He uh, nailed this role. Um, I personally feel if I really had to come down to it of who I feel the best Joker is still, I am going to give that to Heath Ledger still. Um, I also do feel the Dark Knight is the better Batman DC movie overall. Um, I do feel the Dark Knight was a better crafted film. But Joaquin Phoenix's performance in here was very, very good. Um, like I said, even though I do prefer Heath Ledger's Joker overall, I like the mystery behind his Joker a little bit more. Uh, that doesn't detract from the fact that Joaquin Phoenix is a great Joker here. I loved what he did with the character. Um, if he does choose to return to the Joker character eventually, they've like been rumoring a Joker 2 at some point. Uh, I would be totally open to him coming back. He was a great Joker slash Arthur Fleck in this movie, and he really brought the physicality and the right um, qualities of the Joker to the screen. Um, I also like how they had a background about Joker's laugh in this. It is a medical-related um, issue that the Joker character has, um, and I like how this film kind of went over that and kind of... Did brought in this prop that he carries around with him that Arthur Fleck character does to kind of make sure people are aware of why he's doing this weird laugh all the time. So there actually is kind of a story behind that. So I thought it was kind of interesting that we got a Joker film where we get a background on a characteristic of the Joker, which is his laugh. <clears throat> I also liked the dirty and gritty Gotham City setting they had this time around. They actually did base this off of a real trash problem that existed in, I think, New York City at one point, where nobody's trash was getting picked up in the 70s, rats were everywhere, trash bags were everywhere, uh, it was just a real dirty place to live in. So I like how they went with a dirty, gritty Gotham City that really kind of depicted a point in history where people's trash was not getting picked up at all. And so I thought they definitely nailed kind of a dirtier, grittier Gotham City that I also thought the Dark Knight achieved as well back when that came out. I also liked all the Batman and Gotham City nods and references to this movie. Won't spoil them here. I definitely want you to enjoy them for, for yourself as you're watching this for the first time in Joker. Uh, but if you're watching this film and you're kind of wondering, oh, well, where's all the Batman references? Where are all the Gotham City references? Don't worry. They are in here. Some of them happen later than you might want. Some of them definitely happen towards more so the second act, third act. Uh, but there's definitely tons of cool, awesome, fun Batman, Gotham, and City, DC-related things that are nodded and referenced throughout the way that are a lot of fun to behold in this movie. And I also do feel that this story truly is a tragedy. Um, Joker uh, comments at one point in the movie, you know, I thought my life was always a tragedy, but I think it's really a comedy. Um, he really, this truly is a tragedy. This man really... He really was just trying to be this ordinary clown that was helping make you laugh and be the guy that would be hired for your party or for your closing out sale of the store. Um, and he became this awful crime lord person that really kind of has a sick sense of humor and brings violence to the world. And um, he re It really is a tragedy. This man really was just trying to be the funny person uh, got pushed in all the wrong ways and became this person that he was not truly meant to be at all. Uh, this film really represents a character tragedy, a real character study here. Um, and we witness this tragedy along with this character, and it's very well crafted. I also do like the 70s feeling that they offer in this movie. It does kind of have that gritty, grainy 70s film feeling to it. Um, it definitely feels like Taxi Driver, feels like Requiem for a Dream, feels like uh, Network, feels like all these films that are kind of dark and gritty like that. I know Requiem for a Dream did not come out in the 70s, but it kind of had that Darren Aronofsky feeling at times. Uh, I definitely saw a lot of Taxi Driver here. I saw a lot of King of Comedy here, also from Martin Scorsese. Um, and I also saw a lot of Network, which also was released in the 70s. So a lot of cool 70s movie feelings and references and film styles that are applied here, and they're a lot of fun to behold here in this Joker movie. Um, it's not been announced, but one direction I'm hoping they're taking with this, um, and like I said, this is just me talking, me walking out of the theater kind of wondering, this would be kind of cool if they pursued this 
kind of thing. Um, if they did a Two-Face or Riddler villain origin story as kind of the sequel to this or a spiritual sequel to this, I think that'd be pretty cool. Um, you know, one Joker film, one Two-Face film, one Riddler film, that'd be pretty cool to watch. Seeing kind of a young Bruce Wayne, seeing these horrible people run around Gotham and kind of motivating him to eventually become Batman. I think that'd be a really cool direction to take with this. So I know it's kind of a one-and-done deal. That's the kind of the rumored direction for this. But even if they decide to do a Joker 2, which I also would be open for, or Two-Face or Riddler origin movie, I think that'd be really cool too. So hopefully they do that. Fingers crossed. I think that'd be a cool direction to go if Joaquin Phoenix was kind of a one-and-done deal with this Joker film. So hope you're listening, DC and Warner Brothers. I think a Two-Face origin story or Riddler origin story before Batman is around would be kind of cool spiritual sequels to this if they decide to go that route if the Joker 2 thing doesn't work out. For my negatives of Joker, though, um, one aspect of Gotham City that I didn't like in this movie as I had a hard time deciding if this film was showing a too crime-heavy Gotham City, so therefore a lot of people could get away with this, like Joker and the people who kind of beat up Joker throughout this movie and things like that, all the crime. So I don't know if it's like a Las Vegas situation. It's like the crime is just so bad that they just kind of let it go and they help when they can, but they just kind of let it go just because it's just so out there and so big and so disastrous and... No one wants to take the role of the police in this situation and things like that. Or is it a situation where we kind of just gave up on the crime? Yes, we had as much police as possible. There was, you know, 24-hour, on-the-clock police officers everywhere, but it was just so out of hand, hard to resolve. So I felt like this Gotham City kind of hard had a hard time deciding, is it one or the other? Is it just too crime-heavy that the police just can't get around to all of it? Or did they just kind of give up on Gotham City a long time ago and they're really not trying to resolve it anymore because it's unresolvable? Is it that kind of Gotham City or the other way around? So I thought that aspect of Gotham City could have been better decided during the writing and directing process of this movie. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, I do personally feel that Heath Ledger is the better Joker overall. He was in a better Batman movie, better DC movie, better movie overall. Um, and I, I like the mystery of his Joker a little bit more than what McKean Phoenix did in this movie. But just personal opinion there, I do think Heath Ledger is the better Joker. Um, there were certain moments in the film where uh, the Joker was having little fantasy moments to himself. They feel a little out of place, a little out of the blue. Um, they, they involve the Zaze Beats character that shows up that's kind of his girlfriend, so to speak, I guess you could call it. Uh, they feel a little out of blue, out of place. Yes, they explain what's really going on later, but they just kind of feel out of blue as you're watching it. I think that will hurt this film in repeat viewings. Going back to Zaze Beats, like I just mentioned a second ago, um, I thought her character could have been expanded more. I thought her character really didn't serve any purpose in the movie. She just kind of randomly exits the film. Um... I don't know if they just needed another character for Arthur to interact with that wasn't his mother or wasn't a Wayne Enterprise employee or whatever, but um, I thought there could have been more purpose behind her character in this film than just her being the neighbor. But overall, I'm going to give Joker a 9 out of 10. I really like this film a lot. I highly recommend seeing it. If you're a Batman fan, DC fan, or even a crime drama fan, be sure to see Joker. It's a 9 out of 10 for me. I highly recommend it, and Joaquin Phoenix is really good in this Joker role.